Oh, we're back on Closing Bell Oil tumbling today, taking energy stocks with it as well. West Texas crude now fallen below $68 a barrel after Goldman Sachs cut its forecast on the higher supply out of Iran and Russia. But Stephanie Link is still a believer in energy stocks. Back with me now to share how she's playing it. It's ugly. Why are you in it then? <laughs> Because I think there's value, right? I mean, I think that you're going to see this balancing act between excess supplies from Iran and Russia versus Saudi Arabia cuts in terms of production. Mm -hmm. It's going to lead to volatility in the commodity, but I think it remains elevated because I think there's still enough demand from emerging markets. And you now have the U.S. refilling the SPR very, very slowly, by the way, but mm -hmm. at least they're not going to be flooding the markets with the SPR. So I think if oil and crude can stay above 50, which I think it can, then these companies, these stocks, they're minting money. And it's all about free cash flow in the energy sector. And, and again, it's the valuations that are super cheap. Yeah, but look at crude right there, down more than 4%. It's ugly. And China hasn't been nearly, speaking of emerging markets, as strong as I think you or anybody else su suggested or hoped or figured yeah, I mean, that it would be at this point. China's hard. I think China services and the consumer are doing a little bit better in terms of the reopening versus the, the industrial part of their economy. But that doesn't mean that, I mean, they might actually have a stimulus, right? That's all. There's all kinds of speculation. And if they do, and it can grow a little bit better, 5% GDP, I think that's plenty for the crude markets to stay. Again, above 50. We're at 68. It, it's going to be painful if it gets there. But I still think these companies yeah, but you can't do very, tell very me well. 50, if it, let's say crude's 55. These stocks aren't going to do anything. You know that. They're not going to do anything, right? But they are going to generate value creation because they are going to have a lot of free cash flow. Think about how much Chevron has, $15 billion in free cash flow. They're buying back 15 to $20 billion uh, of stock, okay? So that uh, Diamondback Energy, another name I own, they have $2.1 billion in free cash flow, right? Schlumberger, they have a whole bunch of, of free cash flow that they don't even know what to do with, um, and they are plowing it into technology. So these companies are doing stuff Un, uh, you know, underneath the scene or, you know, underneath the surface that I think eventually gets rewarded. Are you over, overweight energy? I am. So but you're, so just to refresh, you're overweight energy, you're underweight tech. Okay. At what point do you say my scale is out of balance for where <laughs> this market is and the writing's on the wall for where it's going? Right. Well, so oil in the S&P 500 is 5%, so I'm 7%. And technology and comps... In technology and comm services, it's 35%. I'm 31% weight. So I have a 31% weighting in my portfolio that's technology. So kind of on a risk-adjusted basis, I absolutely have more exposure on the technology side, which I think is the right thing. But you know me. I kind of like to barbell it. I have a little bit of growth, a little bit of value. I am a little I know, out but of you don't want the bar right you don't, you, The barbell, you'd like to have reasonably even mm, in terms of where things are going. You want to you know, end up like this? I, you're I trying to lift the weight? I think that's, that's kind of how you make money over the long run. Right. I mean, I try to be I try to be a contrarian. I try to look for quality companies that are truly on sale. These stocks are definitely on sale and they're doing the right thing. Who do you like the best? Schlumberger or the former Schlumberger? SLB, I know I always call it Diamondback, Schlumberger. which is Fang and then Chevron, I, as you mentioned. I mean, I like them all. I think SLB is the most exciting, just given digitization and talk, talk about technology. That's what they're doing. And they have a goal of getting EBITDA margins to 25 percent over the coming years, and they can do it because of the technology and innovation. All right. Thanks for sticking around.